got champagne in my locker and it's gonna rain on my friends I got W's on my What's up guys this is Simone Lawrence and we're on the pay me to stop podcast episode number seven. Oh man oh man this is tough one um as everybody knows that we just lost to Montreal so let's get that off our chest uh, Willow be quiet I'm recording my dog, of course, she gets upset when everybody's in the house and she can't roam around and do what she wants. Um, the game was the game, you know, they got to a fast start on us and um, we really just never recovered. Um, and that was, that was tough, but this is the, my pod and I don't want to talk about that shit right now. We're going to get back to it though, because today I have to answer everybody's questions and everybody's concerns. And I'm also going to be doing reading hate emails or hate, hate tweets. It's going to be pretty funny. I'm just going to have fun with it. Um, this doesn't have anything. Wait, first of all, we got to check in with the crew. Zach, how you doing? I'm doing great. Zach's doing great. Are you, how's marriage life? Going awesome. Let's go! My dog Zach is still married. Yes, sir! Let's go! He's holding the strong Zach's all muscle. Let's go. <laughs> What's up, Corey? How you doing, Corey? Doing well, Sam. How are you? Oh, man, you know, living the dream, man. This Love is it. actually the dream. It's living the dream. Seriously, guys. <laughs> Hannah, Hannah, what's up? How you doing? I'm great. Love it. Love to hear it. Love to hear it. Love to hear it. Hannah is going to be reading off a bunch of the questions. She might also have questions. She takes all of this stuff very personal, you guys say about me. I just want you guys to know that. <laughs> All right, guys, so we're going to start and get right into the questions, or should we go into the... Actually... What would you prefer, the love or the hate? Wait, I got to tell them about Sim Takes Twos. This doesn't have anything to do with nothing, but I have to tell Hamilton something. All right, guys, so this is coming to your streets, to a streets near you. We're going to have a live camera crew. We're going to have a live DJ. We're going to go scoop up the best kids in high school football that play wide receiver, defensive back, running back, and linebacker. And we're going to do one-on-ones. We're going to have a cash prize. You're going to get a crown if you win. You get <laughs> the, the new shirts that are coming out. It's going to be serious. St. Francis in Milton is hosting the environment. So it's a St. Francis uh, private school or Catholic school? Yeah, Catholic in, school. in Milton. Mm -hmm. Okay, perfect. And it's a dome, so we don't have to worry about weather. I'm going to come and visit all your schools, and we're going to come and pick the best kids. Tell them when the date is. The date? You tell them when the date is. November 25th. November 25th, 1 to 4. And we're so fly with this, the parents can come too, because my boy Aaron Birch, Tim Hortons, they're going to bring all you guys coffee and donuts to watch your kids be great. Come on. Tim Horton's always on board with everything. Let's go. Best coffee, best place to go to in the morning. And by the way, Tim Horton's is such a beautiful place. Okay. <laughs> so make sure you guys look out for that. It's called Sim Takes Twos, Andy Fan Twos, and Simone Lawrence one-on-one -on -one camp. Check that out November 25th. It's going to be a riot. Literally a riot. Like Friday night riot. All right, so we're gonna get into this, guys. So I get a lot of tweets because I tweet a lot and I understand, you know, and I want everybody to have an opportunity to ask me any question that they want. So right now, we're gonna read off questions that you guys ask, that you guys want me to answer, and I said nothing was filtered. So we're gonna get to it. <laughs> Let's go. <laughs> From Wally underscore Walker, are they bringing you up for a Grey Cup this year? Are they bringing me out for Grey Cup year this year? So, um, I, I am, I'm not aware of it yet, but my fee would be very expensive to go to Saskatchewan and hang out. So, budget-wise, from the CFL, I doubt it. <laughs> I'm sorry, I want to, but they don't love me like that. <laughs> not for that price. <laughs> from Fissel Wick, do you ever see yourself coaching or mentoring one day when your playing career is over? Oh, wow. The funny thing is, like, my playing career is going on right now, and I do do a lot of mentorships for a lot of kids, and I do coach a lot. Right now, my uh, boys, uh, Nelson, have a big championship game to, uh, Thursday. I hope they win. The time this drops, well, I'll let you know if they win, but they've been blowing teams up by 40. From at Ticat Fan for Life, what do you see yourself doing after football? 
what do I sub? Do? Oh, this is easy. I'm gonna be on television talking crap. Um, I'm also gonna be doing a bunch of youth football camps. Um, I'm also gonna be like the best dad ever. Like it's gonna be mad fun. Can't wait. <laughs> From AJ underscore Aria, what's your favorite thing about Canada? My favorite thing about Canada, I just like how peaceful Canada is. Like when I was home in the in the states, I feel like I'm always scrambling to do something. Like when I'm here, I just like sit in my house and play Madden. Like I don't want to do nothing. I just chill and relax. I'm like such a calm and don't have to do anything. But when I'm home, I feel like I'm always on the move. She actually came up with four questions. She came prepared for. Oh this. yeah, what's her name? AJ underscore Aria. I like it. Well, let's read all of your questions. Why not? Who is your favorite past CFL player? Oh, wow. My favorite past CFL player. Um, dang. Who should I give it to? I'll give it to, uh, Coach O. Oh, yeah, obviously. I'll give it to Coach O for sure. 22. That's my dog. Yeah, the jerry curls, the earrings. Come on, man. Don't coach. Ah, oh, man. I wish Coach O still had the hoop earrings in, man. But I think it's such a thing because he had the jerry curl that went with it. So, yeah, yeah. Coach O knew what he was doing. That was like a CFL Deion Sanders if you really pay attention. I see what you did there, Coach O. <laughs> Who is someone you presently admire in the CFL that is not a tie cap player? Um. Of, uh, it would probably be Jeremiah Masoli. That's one of my favorite players. Um, that's my dog. Um, I heard that he might be coming to Sim Takes Twos and playing a little bit of quarterback. So you kids want to get uh, some bombs from Jeremiah Masoli, come check me out. <laughs> Who do you think is the biggest up-and-comer in the CFL? The biggest up-and-comer? Oh, I told everybody this before the season started. Um, my boy Beverett from Montreal. Um, he played linebacker with me for a couple of years and like, he gets it, he gets it, he gets it. <laughs> Someone was asking if you were going to run for mayor in Hamilton. Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, I would have to talk to all my political buddies, you know, <sighs> I don't know if I'm ready to run the show. I like being in the background and just being a voice in the face, but if the day ever came, 2040? I don't know. I gotta be old because I can't. Actually, I can't run for mayor, y'all. Y'all, the mayor game, y'all. You think football is a dirty game? I heard politicians even worse. I don't want no parts in that. <laughs> On a scale from one to ten, how would you rate your professional performance and the Tie Cats D performance this season? Oh wow, that's an amazing question. Who asked that question? Um, the Lethal 13. Lethal 13. Is it from 1 to 10? What's the rating? Yeah, scale from 1 to 10. Okay. Well, my, to be able to be a, like a great football player, you first of all, you have to be on the field. So missing games, you automatically slide down to like a 6.5, right? So, but if you come back and like you go win the Grey Cup or something, then it's like, all right, you came back and you did what you're supposed to do. But if you don't do that, then like lose another point. I'd probably say my performance, 5.5. .5. Not healthy enough, but like still like graded out pretty high and stuff like on games, but not like Simone Lawrence level. Like the level of that I was playing at was like a average regular CFL starter. You know what I mean? I didn't give no, uh, 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 like, those are just like superstar plays that the city's accustomed to me making and like the hits they're accustomed to me making. And that just comes with like repetition, you know, whenever you come into a season and you're injured and you're dealing with injuries, that's just part of the game of what happens, you know. Usually I'm able to cover it up like on the back end of the season when I'm hurt and stuff by doing other things. But yeah, but the defense overall, I think they were probably like a, they were like an 8.59, room for improvement, but they did a great job this year. Just the way, like, the rotating pieces and everything. So I was super proud of all the boys. They held it down for sure. So somebody asked you what your thoughts were on Bo coming to the Hammer. Bo coming to the Hammer. I don't know nothing about none of that. 
Yeah, I don't know about that. that. I don't know who that is. What's that? What's? Yeah, I don't know that. This the next question. <laughs> Scott Adamson's asked, "What do you think the biggest off-season move should be for the Tie Cats?" Oh wow, the biggest off-season move. <laughs> That's the easiest question. Give me a million dollars and let me go crazy. You just get all you gotta do is give me a million dollars. I'll go to California, get a brand new body, come out here, defensive player of the year, great cup. Let's go. Simple. It's mad simple. You give me a million dollars, you know what I'm gonna do to my body? I'm gonna be in the best shape in the world. I invest in me. <laughs> like, come on, give me a bill. And I'll come and show you what a million dollar player looks like. <laughs> <laughs> I'm joking a little bit. <laughs> I don't think you are. <laughs> Gavin Bailey asks if you're coming back to the hammer. My agent, Gil Scott, which is one of the best agents in the world, you know what I mean? He told me I shouldn't talk anything about football, that he was going to talk all football stuff for me from now until I'm signed. So I'm just letting the process take care of the process and I'm just gonna do what I have to do, you know, stay ready, train, take care of business. But I'm not gonna like control that process this year. Eric Dillon asks if you're heading home right away or you're staying in Hamilton for a bit. Oh yeah, I'm definitely gonna go home because I gotta see my mom and dad, go hang out with them. They have a beautiful house in Drexel Hill, Pennsylvania, you know, little suburbs now. You know, I'm a suburban kid now when I go back home and it feel real good. So I like sliding home, hanging out with my mom and my dad. And I'm gonna go do that. And then, you know, I gotta stay out here too because, you know, I got a little fine little thing that like me a whole lot. So she can't get enough of me, you know what I mean? So I'm gonna be out here, so go both ways, but I'll be back and forth for sure. Um, the studio's gonna be live and ready. Anybody wanna come through and make some, you know, cool content? What's your recommendation for younger athletes looking to make it in the CFL slash NFL? Wow, that's a great question. For the, I mean, it's like, if I could tell younger athletes, I would just tell them you have to like believe in yourself, like to like a tremendous amount where it's like unreasonable sometimes. You know what I mean? Because like the one thing about football, it always tests you. It's always going to try you. It's always going to make sure that you want it. Like the football gods are like, some of the toughest guys you know what i mean so like you really gotta be honest with this game because like if you're not honest with this game it will definitely show and um so my advice is just believe in yourself and if you want to learn how to believe in yourself myself and andy fantuz is hosting something november 25th and i'm giving kids the game i'm telling you guys how to go about your business and like you can go and talk to other people but like if you're being honest like there's nobody that just does it consistently talk about it and do it like me like on a consistent basis you know what i mean so like come and learn like the mental aspect of the game because you know when they say football is 90 percent mental 10 percent physical it's the absolute truth you know you gotta really learn how to control your mind control your emotions control your feelings and me and andy fan twos will be teaching that during the sim takes twos what is your pre-game routine my pre-game routine mm -hmm. oh man i got so many it depends. Who are we playing? Anybody. Oh, give me give me a team. I'll I'll give you I'll walk you through the routine. Cause it depends. It really depends who we're playing. Why don't we do one? Okay, we'll do Toronto. Toronto? Oh, this is easy. Alright, so like a perfect Simone Lawrence game ready routine. Alright, let me tell you guys what I did on the opening night before we played Toronto before they opened, when, just when they opened up the field at BMO Field. It was like their first game at BMO Field. It was like the inauguration, like they're coming to Toronto. This is the Toronto Argos. They moved from the Dome and they're going to BMO Soccer Field. And I was like, man, this is a big game. They got the crew outside. Everything looks lit. I'm like, I got to do this like real deal. So what I did was, at the time, who was it? It was Zach Caleros. We went down to Toronto. I stayed at a hotel and stuff, went shopping. I think I was the Adidas athlete at that time, so we just went shopping and stuff. And then we're, um, we were just hanging out in Toronto that whole night. The next morning we had game day, had a nice fly, little five-star breakfast, you know, just nice and relaxed. Took uh, 
I took a car service. I wanted to feel like, you know, Deion Sanders back in the day. So I, my, my, my crazy behind, I spent like 200 bucks to go like 20 minutes down to, <laughs> to the football field because I wanted to feel like I was in a limo and stuff going to the stadium. And then I had the best game of my CFL career. So I'm like, that's another thing. You look good, you feel good, you play good, you play good, you know what I mean? So, but yeah, that was probably like, that's one of my rituals for Toronto for sure. What about Winnipeg? Winnipeg, oh, this is a good one too. All I do for Winnipeg is I call my buddies. I'm like, yo, I'm on my way to Winnipeg. You know, I went to University of Minnesota and I didn't just go to University of Minnesota. I was a captain at University of Minnesota, you know what I mean? So I call my buddies, I tell them I'm going to Winnipeg. So I go to Winnipeg, you know, all my buddies are there. And then like, I'm just already turned up because I feel like Minnesota is in Winnipeg. So I feel like I'm trying to like show everybody that I'm Minnesota, I'm a Minnesota graduate type thing. And then like, I just do weird things like break a CFL tackling record or stuff when I go to Winnipeg. So I appreciate the alley-oop, <laughs> Anna. Okay, we're gonna go now to the hate. Oh! A lot of people, I have to say, a lot of people were coming after you. A lot of people, all Especially right. Especially after this Montreal game. Of course, but like, you know, like I buy that though, you know what I mean? When you're like a dragon and you're like a doggy dog, you know what I mean? Like, you're somebody that like, like you'll see, so, like, like you know how people like, if somebody's walking and somebody slips and falls, right? You're like, I'll like, I'll go help them up, but I'm gonna laugh type thing, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like, and that's just the type of person I am. So if like I slip and fall, like I understand, I get it. But, not from the home team. Where's, let's, all right. Where are majority of the, look, hey, Twitter, 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 Twitter. Where do you think majority of the hate is coming from? I'll give you five seconds to guess. When, when I count up the five, you tell me, and then you guys tell me. One, two, three, four, five. Saskatchewan. Saskatchewan. <laughs> Point blank period. <laughs> it's actually crazy, you know what I mean sometimes, but... They're but fan. surprisingly as well, you also have a lot of love from Saskatchewan. Yeah? Mm-hmm. Well, we'll get back to the love later because we'll finish with love. But I want to get into some of the the hate slash love, you know, because this is just, you know, I bet if I told any of these fans to come hang out with me, like they would like have the best time they ever had in their whole entire life. Especially Matthew. Read some of Matthews. Let's talk about Matthew. Matthew, Matthew what's up, buddy, bro? You made the Matthew. show, congratulations. But you did, you did, you did, you did not like go follow through with everything though. You started getting a little soft at the end before you were like, err, err, like you were picking on me, you felt like tough. And then I woke up the next morning and then you're like, oh, I'm having a bad day. And we all have bad days, there's nothing wrong with that. But in this business, in this talking business, talking crap business, there's one thing you have to do, and that's keep the same energy. You gotta leave everybody off on the same energy you left them off, you know what I mean? Cause like, you like, coming down and be like asking me questions like, hey, what would you do? It's like, it just doesn't seem real, man. Especially when you've been bashing me for like a whole five years. You and that other guy, I don't wanna say his name, but I wish you luck in fatherhood, bro. It's gonna be a tough one for you. <laughs> All right, so let's get to the hate. Let's so we're get... gonna start with his tweet? Yeah, let's get to Matthew's tweet. Cause he has some, no, go to the funny question. Somebody had a good one. Like, was the one I was <laughs> laughing about earlier? Steve Johnson said, tried to call you to offer sympathy on another playoff loss, but there wasn't a ring <laughs> for you to answer. <laughs> That was good. See, like, I'm not gonna lie. Like, sometimes I read these tweets and I literally LOL. You know what I mean? Like, I laugh out loud. Because you guys are actually funny and creative. Like, there's no ring. The pun was ring, right? Like, mm -hmm. he was trying to call me, but there's ring. You don't have my phone. I have two phones and you have none of my numbers, so you're a but liar. But also had a photo of you. Yeah. And then on the other side, it was, like, different versions of rings. Oh, like really? An engagement ring. Oh, wow. Are you coming at the fact that I'm not married? That hurts. That hurts a little bit. That Some hurts a little photos. bit. Come on, man. Hey, but listen, let's not get it messed up now. I could get married tomorrow if I wanted to. <laughs> I'm joking. 
I'm joking. I don't know if I'm joking. I have to ask her. Am I joking? Maybe. I don't know. Yeah, I'm joking. <laughs> Next. <hand. laughs> Matthew said, woke up this morning knowing Simone Lawrence season is over. Life is great. Oh, yes. See, I'm a blessing. I'm a walking blessing. Somebody was sad, woke up this morning knowing that something, what happened? That I Your wasn't season. getting a ring. My season's over, so his life is great. So I'm a walking angel. He's just. I'm gonna get more blessings you. because of you, Matt. Thank you for admitting that I'm a blessing in your life, Matt. My blessings are gonna keep coming. Thanks, Matt. You're 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 doing you're doing a lot for me, Matt. I appreciate you. Brian James said, "Doesn't it get old when your mouth writes checks your play can't catch?" Oh cash. man, my mouth writes checks that my plays can't catch. Cash. Cash. Um, player of the year, player of the year. I mean, yeah, I get it, bro. That's warranted. I understand what you're saying. But it doesn't make sense in my world. Come, come hang out. Just come hang out and see what's really, really real, man. It doesn't make sense in my world. I see what you're trying to say, but in my world, it doesn't make sense. There are a few questions where people actually thought that you weren't playing in the Montreal game. Oh my gosh, those were Some good ones. Some thought, why didn't you make one play? Were you wearing an invisible uniform again? <laughs> again? How many invisible uniforms did I wear? Um, they were not watching the game. This is false information. Um, but no, I wasn't wearing an invisible uniform. I was number 21. Go check and see. Probably one of the top selling jerseys in the CFL for a very over a decade. So if we're going to be like, we need to come with facts, you know what I mean? Like we're in Montreal, ex, ex owner, we're in Montreal and there was 21, there was more 21 jerseys than any other player on Montreal's football team. And we were playing at Montreal and I'm not joking. It's just the facts. Was. I'm just telling you guys the facts of what goes on when I go on the road. I'm just telling you what I see like you guys are telling me who you are but when I get there it's not the truth I'm just being honest with Montreal all 21 years I see anybody like nobody in, in why Montreal. is it that some of the haters still bring up your head against Zach Claros why someone asked you when has Simone been nice other than trash talk and injuring quarterbacks I mean, I understand the sentiment because if I was a Winnipeg fan, I would be like, okay, Zach Caleros went to Winnipeg and he flourished, right? He's like, he's the best quarterback in the league, like consistently, right? And he's, and they're thinking like, oh, I took that away from them, right? On, on an incidental play that happened on the football field. So I understand from a logical standpoint, like, okay, like if it wasn't for Simone, maybe we will be the Winnipeg Blue Bombers. But you know, you can't even think like that. Like this is football. You gotta be dog. You gotta go in your, y'all Saskatchewan fans, y'all tough, right? Why don't you guys run into the office and be like, yo, we want greatness, yo. We want to beat Winnipeg ass. Like that's what y'all supposed to do. Y'all stuck in the past. Y'all got to get better right now because Winnipeg keep running it up on you guys. And that's a freaking rivalry game. Stop worrying about the past and get it done right now. Don't worry about what 21's doing. I'm on the East Coast living my best life. <laughs> Now we gotta go for some love now. With some all that love. Hate. I, I didn't even feel. I need more. I gotta be more. No. Hate. I need more. I didn't even feel no hate. I yo. couldn't even do any more because I wanted to go on Twitter and call some of these people, nah. especially <laughs> that Matthew person. <laughs> all right, wait. All right, all right. So Willow, I'm still recording. My dog, like my baby, like she's a bougie dog. Grade A dog food. What's the dog food we're sponsored by? Oh, I'm signatures. so. Oh, signatures! Big shout out to signatures. My dog Willow, super athletic, bougie dog, is sponsored by Signature Dog Food. You guys should definitely check it out. Her skin shines. She's super athletic. She can jump eight feet in the air, catch the ball. She listens to everything I say, except when like people are in the house and sometimes, and she thinks I'm being under attack because she's like overprotected about me. But that doesn't have anything to do with nothing. But you guys should definitely check out Signature's food. Very good. But I had a scenario, yo. Since my dog Matt wanted so much attention, Matthew, just by reading all of his tweets, 
What is your synopsis? Is that the right word, synopsis? Like, what is your synopsis of Matthew? Can I use that, Corey? Is that the right word? All right, cool. Yeah, what, like, like if, like, if you had to describe who would Matthew be, like, this is like, you know those clue games where you have to pick out, like, and see who the guy actually is? Mm -hmm. Like, is he a movie star sitting in Saskatchewan every week? No. <laughs> is he an all-star football player or something? Do you want me, you want me to be honest? Or is he a cool... Does he capture videos and epic moments like Corey and Zach and show everybody's history and like actually in it? Is that the kind of guy this? No. <laughs> what, what do you think? What do you think? What do you think? You hey, be but honest? be nice. Be nice about it. Don't be like, don't get me canceled. I heard y'all can't. Don't cancel me. Yo. I just got started. Yo. <laughs> I'm still, I got, I got, I got something on the rise. Don't cancel me. Yo. I'm, I'm for the people. I love the people. There's nobody that can't come back and say, Simone, I'm sorry, I love you, and then give me $10,000 and it's forgiven. I don't care. It just rubs off. 10000 rubs off. My phone is ringing. I was definitely told to turn it off. Hold on. I'm in a podcast right now. I'll call you right back, all right? Guys, the Pay Me to Stop podcast is getting all of you awesome. <laughs> <laughs> all right, let's go. I don't know if I can be honest about him. No? All right. So what's, what? how old do you think he is? Late 40s. Late 40s. So what Late makes you come 40s. to that conclusion, though? Late 40s. Because all he does every single day is just hate on people for no reason. Yeah. So I who mean, has the time for that? I'm going to play devil's advocate and stick up for Matt. I talk a lot of shit to Sass fans. When Sass lost... Cassette, well, the only reason I Okay, but Matt takes it to like a whole nother level. Like he'll take a photo that you post and say, who doesn't have any gray cup rings? And it's you doing your <laughs> typical photo of you smiling with your hands up. Like. But like, that's, that's comedy. That's kind of jokes. But like. It's annoying. It is annoying. It's part of the game though. I'm in the entertainment business. Like this is what I'm here for. I'm here to make people's days lesser than what reality is you know that's what entertainment is like and for whatever moments matthew's clowning and roasting me or anybody from saskatchewan's clowning and roasting me i'm helping them throughout the day and that's why i keep getting blessed and they don't know that so they're helping me so thank you but they are. Huh, they, you know they what are. i mean they are they so watch all, all your stuff then they go on twitter you know and tweet about it and say exactly. hateful things and they're the gang yo i love you guys man you guys are cool man i appreciate you guys because like if anybody knows how hard life can get it's simone lawrence so like if you if all you gotta do is say a little joke about simone lawrence and you have a better time you can lol with your friends and make yourself feel good please use me i beg you please use me send jokes send pictures send all of that because Look, <laughs> I just brush. Like, I don't even feel it. Like, I'm not. Uh, Hannah, can I tell them about what I was doing last night? All right, last <laughs> night, right? You know what I do? Well, you know what I do for like fun and stuff? So, last night I went to play trivia. And, you know, I, I like to challenge myself, you know, because I'm a super intellect, of course. University of Minnesota, you know. Um, you know, the resume speaks for itself. Valley Forge Military Academy, you know, like the resume speaks for itself. You'll get it later. And if you get it later, you probably won't even be able to catch me. But so last night I was just hanging out with a couple of great friends. Um, actually, I went to my girlfriend's house. She invited me to her house and we had trivia night and it was five doctors. Right. So it's like, all right, it's a little intimidating. I walk in there. You know, and it's trivia night. And then you you just assume that it's doctors, right? So it's like, man, they about to smoke me. Like, there was some smart people in there. Like, I got smoked a little bit, but I held my own. And I did post a picture of me coming in third place. So there was only two doctors out of five doctors that were better than me. So I'm calling myself Dr. Lawrence. <laughs> I'm calling myself Dr. Lawrence. Hey, I'm calling myself Dr. Lawrence. It's over. I'm Dr. Lawrence. From now on, everybody call me Dr. Lawrence. I'm certified, yo. Five doctors and I finished two? No med school? No residency? Come on, man. What was the game? It was it was murder mysteries. It was drawings. Like you had to draw like Pictionary type of stuff. Um, 
it was trivia, like all about like stuff that I had no idea I even knew it. Like, you know how somebody asks you a question and you never ever heard about the question? Everybody else is like, oh, I know this, I know this, did I read this? I've never heard it, but I knew the answer. I was just like, well. Are you com- sure your girlfriend wasn't helping you? No, she wouldn't help me. She's a competitor. She's mad competitive. Like, if she could, like, stomp on my neck during the competition, she would do it. Like, she's, she's, yeah. Like, like you know, I rub off on everything. You know what I mean? So, but, like, I was holding my own. Like, I was like, oh, wow, that makes sense. Like, that makes sense. Just because, like, my context clues. Like, I'm a, hi- uh, my hypothesis were amazing, yo. Know? Like, wow, my hypothesis was amazing. You know what hypothesis means? Yes. Okay, educated guess, right? Mm-hmm. Okay, I'm just making sure my vocabulary is right. <laughs> <laughs> Who said I can't do this show with no guess? Like that. <laughs> so let's talk about the QEW series. The Q- oh! Big shout to the QEW series. Mm-hmm. All right, let's be real. All right, so we live a cool life, like... I, like, I get to do cool stuff, so I ran into a little late on the QEW series, but we were watching it on the um, phone or whatever, and um, it was cool. But they messed out on a lot of parts that we needed to be in. So, like, the beginning of it was mad, like, like, anxiety, like, my chest is up in my, like, you know what I mean? Because they're talking about, like, a lot heavy stuff, you know what I mean? Like... Just a lot of heavy stuff. And then you went to the quarterback's house and he was reading a book for like a cool like 15 minutes. What did you think <laughs> about that? Like, come on. In a documentary series that's supposed to be about rivalries, I yeah. would not have that long about someone reading a book. Yeah, that's what I'm saying, yo. And like, he's way cooler than that, M- McLeod. Like, bro, I don't know where the book concept came from, but like, you're way cooler than that. I trained with you for two years in California. I know you're fly, I know you're cool. Like, next time, holla at me and I'll tell you what to do on camera, you feel me? And then they took out our like cool stuff like that we had on our stuff, you know? No, like, they, no, there has to be more. There's no way you did all that filming for... I did do a lot of filming. Y'all ain't even get to see the uh, GT. I'm mad y'all didn't get to see a GT. They took that out on purpose. They was like, we don't want... That was fly. No, they didn't. They, they took the GT I'd out I'd be of, mad. Right, that's what I'm saying, yo. We had the... We had... What's the car called? GT63. Yeah, we had the GT63. AMG. GT63 AMG. Vroom, vroom. What, like $300,000 car? Okay. Well, whatever. It doesn't even matter. But we had that for the documentary, and we were, like, cruising through the city, going through the city, showing everybody, like, what it's like in Hamilton and stuff. A day in the life of Simone Lawrence. Like, a real day in the life, though. And yeah. then, like... It was a true day in the life. And it was live, though. It was fun. Like, and there were so many, like, real reactions of, like, just running through Hamilton. And I was like, wow. Like, we could, like, if we really run around the city with a camera, like some good content that happens, you know? Because I'm good everywhere. I can go to, like, you know, um, Barton Street, and then I can go to Oakville. Where's my cutoff? Oakville's probably my cutoff, right? Yeah. Yeah, Oakville's my cutoff. Yeah, Oakville. Oakville's my cutoff. Yeah. But what's that place in Oakville that we went to that does, like, the meat and stuff? Like, when we're there with the Oakville man. Oh, God, I don't even know how I get into some of this stuff. All right, so I went to... Oh, Maverick? Yeah, get Mavericks that because we got to give them a shout out because the food there was actually so good. And like I'm sitting in Oakville and then the mayor of Oakville comes and they're like, hey, come, let's all take a picture. We're cutting the ribbon. So I'm like, this is my first time cutting a ribbon. I'm with the mayor of Oakville and I'm at this a beautiful establishment. We got to get the name of it. What is the name of it? Oh, they have smoked meat. It was kind of like a um, Deniger's, but better kind of. Yeah, they're the they were the, the new sponsors. Yeah, there. oh my gosh. I'll put it in there, guys. I'm so sorry, but it's oh man. All right, don't be mad at me sponsors, but it was very good and everybody remind me to ask me what it is and I will let you know. Let's go. What's next? What's next on the hate? I want more hate. I don't want to go back to the love. No, yet. I can't do the hate. All right. I can't do the hate. All right. There's man. too much. There's and too it's much. The same- <laughs> People who just keep going back and talking about the past and past and past. So, why give them that clout? All right, bet. 
All right, so let's... They'd rather you stuff on you from the past versus right now in this season. Mm-hmm. Why would you give them that power? There's no power going on. This no is power, entertainment. But... This is just fun. Like, you know what type of person I am in real life? Like, these people... Like... Yeah, I know. <laughs> like, what? I know. <laughs> like, what are we talking about? <laughs> All right, so how are we going to close this, Hannah? We got to find a way. What's up, Corey? Quick question. Yes. Love question, okay, okay. What's it like having the number one podcast? On audio? <laughs> <laughs> the question was, what is it like to have the number one podcast on audio tie cat network? It's amazing. And I couldn't do it without my dog, Corey and Zach, because they come here and they get me all prepped and ready, looking fly on the camera, getting my angles, making sure I'm looking good. Couldn't do it without my dog, Hannah, in the cut, doing a lot of research for me, making sure everything's cultured, getting the situations. Couldn't do it without all my guests. My dog, Dave, that's a background producer. He pretty much tells me, like, if I'm going too far, because, like, sometimes I really want to step on y'all neck, but I'm not allowed because of the mob, and they tell me to chill and relax. So I relax a little bit, but it feels amazing. You know, um, this episode will be a little break between this, but I'm hoping to open up the next episode with Caretaker Bob. I want Caretaker Bob to come in my house and come hang out with me. Come drink some Simi Hove Incredibles. No. <laughs> no. Come drink some Simi Hove Incredibles. Red wine. Red wine. <laughs> no, we got to get it. Like, if he's going to come and be a... can't do a Simi Hove. No. You I know Bob nice Young's a billionaire, classy. but we need to... Gotta bring... do a nice, classy... No. For Mr. Young. Listen, he's used to that. Like, he needs to feel it. Like, he needs a Simi Hove Incredible. He needs to be do 21 questions. But I feel like... I feel like Mr. Bob Young, he would answer all the questions. But hey, I don't think you <laughs> ask your fans if huh? anyone has questions for Yo, Bob Young. Yo, Mr. Bob Young is going to be my first ep- The only way I come back is if Mr. Bob Young is in my house hanging out with me, drinking Simi Hove Incredibles, and just having a great time. You know what I mean? The caretaker. The caretaker on Pay Me To Stop podcast. Like, that'd be that'd like be a insane. dream come true. Like, that'd be nuts. Hannah, use your resources and, you know what I mean? We'll figure it out. We'll try to make it happen. We'll do. Yeah, we'll make that happen. Caretaker Bob, I love you. Thank you for everything. Um, thank you for everything, you know what I mean? Thank everybody for everything in Hamilton, actually. Because, like, life is so fun and life is so amazing. And I owe a lot of it to Hamilton and the Hamilton Tiger Cats. Like, because they gave me this platform to showcase my skills. And, you know, I've been rocking out with them for a while. They've been rocking out with me for a while. It's a two-way relationship. I hope this relationship lasts forever. Um, I'm really grateful for everything. I'm grateful for everybody, the organization. I'm grateful for the fans. I'm grateful for every single teammate that came through here. I'm grateful for all my past teammates. I know sometimes it may not feel like I'm grateful for my past teammates because the way this game is set up and that, like, I have to block you guys out because, like, once you switch sides, it's like my brain just clicks to a different side. Like you're trying to take my money away from me because that's all football is. Like when we play every week, we're trying to embarrass each other and make each other lose our job. And when you lose your job, you can't feed your family. So you got to like distance yourself from that kind of stuff. I'm just giving you a free game, by the way, right now. So all you super friendly guys, you got to be very careful because like this game is like kids game, but King's Ransom, you know what I mean? And it never changes. And I appreciate the game. I love the game. I appreciate the organization. And this is the Pay Me to Stop podcast with Simone Lawrence. See you guys soon with Caretaker Bob.